I'm Alexandra Kreis and you're listening to Outer Travel in a Journey. Journeying now for 30 years into the life and practice of yoga, I have met many who have taken interesting turns when past extraordinary bumps and reached unexpected places. People with whom I shared conversations about everyday struggles, intimate realizations, larger questions, ideas and dreams. So today I'm passing on the mic to one of them so we could hear and celebrate the wisdom in people's differences and experiences. Welcome to Outer Travel in a Journey. On my show today, I am sitting down with Zoe Knight. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you for coming today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm very excited. <laughs> so am I. Zoe and I are going to explore the world of dancing together and how dancing is an expression of life. And as well, the ups and downs of dancing and of the career well lived for Zoe. I think you, you have quite a career behind you as a performer, dancer and choreographer. So, yes, welcome to our conversation. Be the fly on the wall. <laughs> to, you know what's going on with the dancers these days. Um, so we, maybe we can give a, a brief introduction to your person you know because i to for people to know where you're coming from and what you've done so far yeah sure um um yeah so i'm australian <laughs> <laughs> long story <laughs> Can I make it short? um so i'm an australian dancer as you know alex and um Yeah, I, I did some study in Australia. I studied actually performing arts there. And then I came to Europe because I was really curious about the artists coming back to Australia at that point. Um, what they were bringing in was really kind of speaking to me a lot more than what I was seeing there at the time. And um, so I came over here to study uh, and then ended up staying like so many uh, dancers and performers and have been here for quite a while now and working with lots of different um directors, choreographers, as a performer and also making my own work. And um, I was mm. based for a while in Austria in Belgium and Berlin for a long time. And now here I am in Frankfurt. And that has kind of brought me a lot across a lot of different fields, so artistic fields. I'm mostly in contemporary dance, but I do mm. work in various areas. So, yeah, here yeah, I am. You You do, and I very much relate to, you know, being excited about, I mean, I'm not a dancer, I used to dabble in dance, you know, but I've been a keen observer of dance, and of course, everybody has their own taste and what they like and what they feel represents maybe their inner feeling, because I think while I was living abroad, it took me a very long time to find companies and groups that would kind of reflect back on what I had first experienced as, you know, exciting dance. I mean, sorry, you know, this was Sasha Walt. I, I kind of met her company in, in Berlin at the time. It was just so outlandish to me in, in the 1990s, what she brought to the scene. And maybe some people don't know what I'm talking about. And we're, we're not here to narrate dance styles, but in, in that self, what you see is them doing for, for people or what you feel like is, um, is, is so important about having different dance companies and expressions. I don't even know how to ask this properly. Maybe, um, maybe this is not exactly the answer. The, uh, not, I don't want to say right and wrong. This is not quite the answer. Yeah. But, um, I can at least say what... I, you know, like with dancing, I'm constantly like rediscovering what it is about it that really needs to be expressed or really is important to me. Um, um, and I think though, basically with dance, it's mostly nonverbal, you know, and the body is able to express things that we don't have a vocabulary for. And so, um, And, and what is really precious about that is that each of us have only this physical body to experience this 
manifestation in the world. I mean, it's it's our first port of call to, to kind of understand how you're relating to everything else, every other object, every other being. And, and so, of course, um, language is constructed. I mean, we need that to communicate, but there's so much more than we can put into words. And I think that's what's super valuable, that you can relate because you have a body and you can relate to another moving body. And it's all through mm. body language and mannerism that we communicate anyway, you know, a lot of that information. So this is why, um, and maybe one dance style speaks to you more than another, but this is why I think it's super valuable as a way of like sharing experience, you know, so. Well, thank you for saying that. And it brings up this really deep question in me <laughs> again, uh, because you said that I, I was just leading a meditation there, and when when I kind of led into it, I noticed that a lot of the things we do when we do yoga, you know, I'm sure a lot of my listeners do yoga or do learn meditation or whatever kind of physical practices there are on the spiritual lane, you know, it's all so instructive, and I was kind of trying to make people relate more to their body sensations because I think that's a huge struggle in in the yoga world and I often think it's also a thing in the dance world now that you're saying it and that I know dance is a little bit privately it's this um, the body wants to speak and express and intuitively my body will respond as, uh, as a viewer but in some ways will we'll very seldom listen to our bodies, don't we? We don't have this inner communication all the time. Because a lot of us ignore our body sensational field. We, we suppress emotions. We don't want to feel, you know, we suppress pains. We don't want to feel like, oh, I have a headache. Let me take, you know, something for it. Oh, my knee hurts. Let me do something around it. And so this conversation that you're expressing in dance how how much is that really happening? That is a question to you, or maybe more conversation. Um, I think like you got it with the with the um, reference to listening. I mean, I'm not saying that we're there yet, but I think actually more than trying to connect is this this practice of listening to others or listening to our body, which you know, you come to through meditation, you come to through your yoga practice, your dance practice. But um, I think if we found spaces socially and, and individually to like listen, you know, and let the stuff come to us and then respond rather than try to reach out, I think that's a wonderful place to start like discovering things and letting things happen to us. Um, I'm going a little off track here, but. Um, no, no, I think you're right on. So for, for me, that's like the most important thing in that question, like how can we, and you know, I'm constantly looking at this myself. I also do a lot of um, vocal practice connected to dance. And so it's also like become a real uh, theme for me. And I'm, and I'm also following people whose practices are a lot about listening. I find it really fascinating, you know, what can happen. It's this idea that, you know, we have in life now that this consumerist idea that, and this self-centered idea, I don't mean that only in a negative way, but that, mm. that we have to be busy with ourselves, and that's the most important thing. And yes, it is, but, but we forget because we're moving always outwards and searching beyond ourselves for um, whatever that is, satisfaction, gratification, acknowledgement, um, that the stuff is already there with us in our bodies and the body is so intelligent. We just need to like, not be lazy, but actively listen to what's going on and um, listen, really listen to information and words and and bodily knowledge that's coming at us from teachers and friends and colleagues. And um, just practicing that I think is a really good start. And I know that, and a lot of people probably also know that, that, you know, there is, seems to be a time for the dancer, you know, the younger years where you can do so much with the body and express it so much more fluidly. And then when you grow older, you know, it becomes less, I wouldn't say less expressive, but it, come, because it 
tunes into a different kind of level of self-expression, you know, and I know most of my dancer friends, they, they kind of struggle with that back and forth because you do have a love for dance, don't you? You know what I mean? That's, and that's the hard bit. Can you talk a little bit about these experiences? Yes, I totally through? can. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I know. What? The last few years. No, um, yeah. it's really weird because I think a lot of people relate to this. I don't feel the age that my physical body is, you know, inside and in relating to people. But then, you know, things happen. And, and I do think, you know, I have two kids and I do think having a family and not being able to spend the time I could before with myself and my practices um, certainly affects that. I think it depends very much on the situation you're in. But yes, of course, the material takes longer to recover and needs a different kind of attention. And um, I have been confronted a lot in the last few years of, you know, where I've done a lot of productions performing with extremely young amazing performers and thinking wow I can still be here but I feel this and this and um and I've had quite a few like roller coasters with injury or just kind of understanding that my energy like wants to focus somewhere else I still have like an intensity of desire but I think also through experience I mm, Uh, I can identify more quickly where I want to invest what energy I have, you know, in a particular direction. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think it's quite um, challenging. I don't know how it is in other arts fields, but because we're busy with the body and dance, there are points in the way that um, dance is set up that are more difficult for people with families, are more challenging, you know, in terms of your schedule. For example, can you help us understand that? Well, it's also just simple things like schedule, you know. It's happening more and more in the contemporary dance scene where people are really making space for people who have other commitments to kind of work in a particular time frame so that they can be there for their children after school or whatever. Um, they might work earlier. Um, or they might structure the days very differently. They might, I, I think I've heard of companies that have, you know, even childcare and things like that. I'm, I'm talking very specific to my experience. Um, or they have, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of um, projects happening now with mixed generations, with older dancers, you know. So it's, think, things are moving and this is really fantastic and really important. But, yeah, there is a point, I think, and I've heard this from a lot of friends where, um, you know, you do re-question why you use your body and what, how you can sustain, you can sustain that. And I do actually think it's possible. I've had moments where I thought, oh my God, this will never work again. And then suddenly with patience, you know, I'm feeling like 20 again. So I don't know <laughs> beyond that, what's going to happen. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So um, thank you for that insight. And a lot of dancers end up in the yoga practice. This is the question that I always wanted to ask. Um, so I'm pushing my own um, curiosity here. And a lot of dancers end up in the yoga practice, you know, in the, and then there is a lot of envious people on the other side. You know, I mean, as you say, you know, an older dancer might kind of look at a younger dancer and think like, oh, that was me. And in yoga practices, when dancers come in into the class, you know, a lot of people seem a little bit like, awestruck and there's a whole narration around that on social media how a lot of dancers took over yoga poses in the social media and made them look really graceful and beautiful from the outside because it's such an expression and then to me yoga is an inside expression and you almost kind of said that initially you know like dance is teaching us or telling us stories through the body so it must be something from the inside but why are dancers drawn to do the, the work on that level? You know, I mean, you could, you might as well just become a, you know, to gain more spirituality or connection to the unified field. Why don't you just go into the meditation scene? And some of you probably do who are listening. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if I fully got the, the whole question, but I'll try and answer you. Um, 
I can just say like I discovered uh, yoga at the same time I was doing my my studies and I was really luck, lucky enough to be at Shandor's school at the time and I didn't know what I'd stumbled mm. upon but you know I loved the information I got there and I actually thought about going into yoga at that point but I was too busy with with dance and stuff but I what I did love was this um, journey from the body to something deeper you know to understand my body on a cellular level on a spiritual level to kind of see through the physical practice how i can move beyond my body you know i remember this was really transformative for me at the time he was teaching iyengar and holding positions for ages and like thinking i was going to die and then the tears would be streaming down my face and then suddenly it was all gone you know there was nothing of that I was somewhere else and there was like a freedom in that and kind of realizing, mm -hmm. wow, this is all my head doing this to me, you know, obviously my body too. And this was really, um, I think that deepened my dance practice a lot as well. And I think with dance, of course, when you're young, like I've been dancing since I'm three, you know, it's about shapes and of course a feeling, but you're moving from understanding positions of your body in space and in relation to others and directions and timing and then I think over the time with the practice, you're able to combine that with something, something that comes from out there that you need to express or some, something that's inhabited in your body. So um, I think it can go both ways. I think if you go into yoga and you're really flexible and really strong, it can give you a lot of stuff. It doesn't mean though that you're, working from a yogic perspective do you know what I mean it's each person's own journey how they get there and if they want to get mm. there does mm. that make sense yeah absolutely yeah and I was just asking it from curiosity because I also think you know like the that some of the bodily narrations of I can witness in shows, you know, are very much the concept of the mind at times, you know, mm -hmm. like, this, oh, you're, you're repelling me. Oh, I love you. Oh, I'm sure. you know, like all these kind of um, practicing movements. And you brought it so gracefully together and saying like, and then there is a deeper voice there that kind of takes you out, almost out of your body into the bigger field. And you can have that on a cellular physical level with the yoga practice. Um, and yes, I know that <laughs> feeling of emotions coming up. Um, and sometimes that to, to, to me as um, a person that needs to relate to her body more often than other people would do that because they're well embodied, you know, like a meditation is really difficult to bring in as such and uh, to, to connect with myself. You know? So that's what I'm hearing you say, you know, there is that connection from the body into the unified field with god with love whatever we want to consciousness you know and in meditation of course i can switch immediately into that broader consciousness but mm. i leave behind my body in some ways it's necessary but it makes it very difficult then to relate to my body when it comes to injuries you know <laughs> undigested food uh, even the simplest things you know i it's like oh i could switch off again and go out in the unified field where everything is speaky but i do carry around this body and i need to you know make it work so that's just what i'm hearing you say as well you know but do you mean um the question regarding um meditation like how do you relate to your body during meditation for or yeah that's what i mean that's what i mean you know like I, I mean dancers would relate to their bodies in dancing you know and so if they wanted to have a depth to it they could just you know bring it through meditation that's what i think well i think a lot, a lot of dance practices are meditative i mean I, i'm talking about this because i've done a lot of work where the movement becomes so repetitive and, and this that it is a meditation and you're moving and so that you know like you're saying your mind is busy with something. It's not as hard as sitting still, but I have a recognition of what that can be, you know, and 
depending on what you've done as a dancer, you might get there faster. There's so many different styles of dancing and ways of creating work, you know, yeah. it's very cerebral, but then when you put it together on stage and watch it, it still moves you, you know, it comes from a very um, yeah, conceptual space, but nonetheless, it's like abstract art, you know, other people are working very much from an emotional space. So Again, it's really personal, but in my experience, I already access those things and I think I've been looking for them anyway my whole life. So mm -hmm. it's a different experience. But I understand that like, for example, my daughter, she has, you know, her mind is super busy. So sitting down and meditating is extremely hard for her. And mm -hmm. coming from where I come from, finding the tools to help her is more challenging than someone who might have the same, same issue. But, um, and she needs to be physical to then let things go and maybe in a few years she can she can sit still and stuff but yeah mm. I think it's quite personal and um yeah sitting still meditating is the challenge but uh... <laughs> all I wanted to point out here and I didn't mean to insult anybody who's doing dance that you're just showing off I didn't mean that I just wanted to take that back in in case that came up wrongly into you know our conversation I do I love art for its expression and taking away my rationality about, you know, like I have to make so and so much money. I have to have that and that kind of career to secure the roof over my head. I love art for its vivid self-expression and joy in life and love, you know, love for life and um, without being entangled in the not to the viewer, you know, to the um, entangled in the uh, survival struggles, you know, they're the and uh, what I'm trying to explore with you together here is, you know, why why are artists like you drawn between um, I have to do this or that, you know, I have to do the yoga or I have to do the dance. I become a yoga teacher or I become a dance teacher, you know. That's what I wanted to to use this a little bit for because at the end of the day, if you can connect through your dance into a bigger field because you've done all the preparational work, it doesn't matter what you do any longer, does it? Again, it's really personal, but... I'm yeah. constantly rediscovering that maybe it does matter to me, you know, maybe this is like the way that I need to be in the world to kind of discover new things through my body. Um, and it's funny what you were saying before about how you can watch art and you can like not be busy with the chaos, but I'm thinking what a precarious uh, existence we've chosen as artists, you know, it's total chaos. You don't know when, you know, it depending mm -hmm. if you freelance or not, but you yeah. know, there's constant change there. And I've had moments where I've thought this is like, you know, is this <laughs> healthy or, you know, like wh yeah. why? But, but that constant um, reassessing means that you do have to stay awake and you, you are in movement all the time and it's challenging, but still there's an ability to kind of shift quickly into a new situation uh, or, or to, to connect to people in a different way or constantly meeting new groups of people and kind of understanding dynamics and how you can exchange ideas and energy. You know, I think um, this becomes very valuable. And I've realized in moments where I haven't been able to be physical that it's really not good for me personally. You know, I need to yeah. have... Um, I need to be in my body to be able to kind of be well in the world. Um, yeah. And as I said, that's super personal, you know, other people are not, but I, uh, not, they don't, that's not necessary for them. But um, I've totally lost what your question was, Alex. I'm sorry. <laughs> there was, no, there was no question. I mean, as you say, you know, it's a chaotic field and between the desire of, you no. Know, I was saying to you, you know, like, is it important to make a choice between becoming a yoga teacher or a yoga practitioner or a dancer, you know, and just being a dancer in this real open aware kind of expression and in the connection. There's so many ritualistic dancers, if you think about it, you know, the Sufis, the 
swirling sufis, the massage to jump up and down, you know, to express whatever needs to come out for the community. And so dance is in itself a spiritual practice. Yes, you kind of elaborated on that a bit. And so why is it often that I hear, you know, people say like, I need to make a decision this or that. Why is that? I mean, I know it's a personal conversation we're having, so. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think, I mean, at least from being busy with these questions a lot lately, especially I think everyone's super (laughs) questioning a lot of things now because of Corona, but um, Mm. I I think there is like this sense of, and this is again, this pull of of consumer capitalism, you know, that you have to have a stability, you have to have a security, and that's not wrong. I mean, it's important if you want to function, but... um, I think um, for me, at least yoga, you know, that there's a clarity there too. There's a limit to the number of positions. There's infinite possibilities in how you experience those, but there's more simplicity and clarity in that that may be attractive for some people because you have a structure, you know what you do, and you can be incredibly creative in that and very fulfilled. It's a very different thing than like, being in the dance scene at least that I'm in where you could from in one project be standing still and speaking and the other one like moving and sweating your ass off you know yeah. what I mean and so yeah. I, I think in one aspect it's just about deciding what you want to need in your life at that point and for me it's a question of do I want that because I think I need it or do I want that because it's good for me actually and it gives me other other things but what I keep rediscovering is that for me, there must be within that question, this need to like feel like I'm in control of what happens to me in my life, you know? So there's this constant every day, like, okay, this is happening today and I adjust to that and it's okay. Does it shift me out of my center or can I stay like aware of what matters, you know? And I'm Mm -hmm. noticing this with the shift from Corona times being really isolated at home for months and now and thinking, okay, I'm going to spend my time, on these things, these are the things that I really care about in art. And then everything's opened up in the last few weeks and I'm already like bouncing from one project to the next, which is super fantastic and really exciting stuff. But, you know, it's this constant Mm. back and forth, I think. And I really lately have also been looking into, um, because I miss my home, but I've been looking into, you know, um, Aboriginal culture in Australia where I come from. And, um, you know, the value in in dance or or the origins of dance are really social and really spiritual and really, um, uh, oh, what's that point? What's the word? Um, uh, The kind of markers of events in life and social agreements or social understanding or expression of of something or or asking for something or being Mm -hmm. thankful and, and... it's not a question of passages at times. Yes, maybe. exactly. And but it's it's not like an external thing. It is just part of being in the world. And this is kind of what I'm trying to trying yeah. to find in what I do. You know, how can yeah. this be just a part of my life that's unquestioned, and it can move into this and the other aspect of being in the world? You know, and I, I tend to talk very generally. I hope I'm making myself a bit clear. No, I love that you kind of brought that up because that uh, I related to that earlier, you know, that there are like dance used to be a form of self-expression, but also you, you also related to that earlier on this conversation, you know, when we're just me centered. So if you go out on the dance floor as a regular Jane, you know, and you just dance your heart out because you want to express your body and your emotions, it's it's self-centered and that's good, you know, like we we can express ourselves that way. But when we're taking it a step further, it can become an expression and a platform for everybody else to be held and uh, not conceptualized, but experiencing themselves in this form of movement. Mm. And yeah, I I think dance is already a spiritual practice to me as well, you know, like, and, and even if you do just dance your heart out on the, on the dance floor and suddenly because you've danced for a long time something is happening to you that can be also and um things that that can occur 
for no reason the techno scene has come up, you know, as such a strong spirit because the the beat and everything that kind of releases something in our body, you know, like uh, next to all the hormones um, and the dopamine and all that, it, it's probably a liberation from repetitive, you know, um, result orientated thinking. So yeah, kudos, you know, like I. I feel we have to go back and see where these things come from without wanting to undig them and carry them in the same form forward. But the, the, I think like in yoga and like in meditation and like in so many spiritual practices, what I would love to see in the dance world to have that more in the forefront, you know, like a new way of doing traditional dances. And we just passed the summer solid. I mean, there used to be dance around that, right? And yeah. where is that now? But there is a lot of that kind of happening and a lot of interest in that, at least in the experimental dancing that, yeah. you know, I'm part of. And this is really valuable. And this is what I really love about this scene. You know, they're really asking, I mean, it's the same in every field. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of intellectualizing why we do what we do and some of that is unnecessary but I think generally it's super important to ask questions and kind of try new formats out and experiment and and push things forward because you see it um you see it echo then socially later on you know you see the the importance of these questions I have so many um friends dealing with feminism and and colonialism Mm. all the all these topics that are now present but really asking super important questions i very much admire these people because i really see how these groups of people are are, are shifting uh, shifting things in our society and this is what i find um important and when you talk about the techno there's for example pieces where people are very busy with that experience Mm. and and understanding that and i think you know, in terms of something like that, it's, I mean, of course, if you move, you release all these blockages and you come to a, to, to another space and you can do that as an individual. You can do it also as a group of people conceptually, you know? Mm, um, yeah. So, uh, and, and I think some of the most beautiful things I see are people who are really not dancers or just things I notice that are choreographed without any awareness in a park, you know, just a, mm. people passing experiences in life, children playing in a particular way. You know, this is like, I think this is what I drew me to choreography, just trying to sort of not freeze and capture, but somehow um, in a way to capture these moments you just see every day in nature and in life yeah. that make you, that move you, you know? Yeah. So turn the magnify them, turning up the volume or something like that on yeah. those things. Yeah. 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 And the relationship we we take to each other by moving past each other. That's what I heard you saying. You know, like I really love that statement. I don't know why I have to record it already in the podcast, but I really love what you said that it's, you know, like our body language is much louder than our skillful I mean some people are super skillful with words you know but the body communicates that on such a broader level to me as well yeah and there is no judgment in that it's just a perception and what you can take in so when we move across space even in the park or in whatever public transport we do talk to each other constantly and yeah yeah, it's really, it, it's just, it's a going back to that idea of listening, you know, it, mm-hmm. everything is there. <laughs> Again, I'm saying the same stuff. Everything's there. You just have to notice it, you know, it's just the meditation you're talking about. It's just the practice of, of seeing and listening and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and seeing what it does to you. Yeah. That judgment, as you said. Well, thank you, Zoe. I think that's the, uh been quite a ride we've been trying to do here <laughs> and uh again please see this as a personal conversation zoe and i are having me as a former yoga teacher and zoe as a dental choreographer and yoga experience student teacher whatever <laughs> you know like you want to call yourself in that relationship just to highlight 
how our bodies speak. I think that's what came out for me. What did come out for you or what do you think is? Um, pretty much a similar thing. Um, I think actually I'm, I'm left now with a lot of questions. I found it very interesting what you were asking in the perspective of, of how you're looking at, you know, I think I'm I'm quite busy now with like how the experiences is, is is for a non dancer you know to to enter into your body you know I feel like I'm left with a lot of brain food which is wonderful ah the next thank step you. I can hear it coming <laughs> well thank you Zoe for your time it was beautiful to talk to you pleasure yeah it was um, wonderful thank you yeah and um, see and hear you next time dear listener bye. bye.